All right, so what I've done now is I've placed four elastics on the center there, and this is how I did it. I'm just placing the fifth one in there. So I've got five elastics centered in this point here. I then place the brace in, or as I say, the face bow to the brace. Now, all right, so that's all nicely attached. All right, but most outside ones, I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna put over a point on the brace. What this is aiming to do is keep the brace together. Now, I could have placed it over one of the cow horns, which I frequently do as well. Oh, no, that's not quite what I wanted. Well, actually, that's um, gone over to there. So I could have placed it over that cow horn. You see how it's placed over the underneath that cow horn? I'm trying to keep it out of the way doesn't matter exactly where it is. What this is aiming to do is simply keep this apparatus together so that this face bow doesn't pop out at night. It's really quite effective at doing that. There's a little bit of friction in the face bow anyway. Added with the elastic, that becomes very effective. The next one along I need to connect to the um, face bow, the, the hook on the front of the um, appliance and then that comes out sideways, all right? So I'll put that on the hook, and that's come out sideways. I then take the same on the other side, the appliance, and I take that back there, and I take that one out, and I connect that to the hook sideways. So what we've got there is we've got, um, these are the elastics pulling the appliance to the face frame, and this is elastic pulling the upwards on the face bow to the face frame. So we can go and see that in the mouth. We bring that across. So Natasha, head back a little bit. Open nice and wide. All right, so I press that up appliance. I clip that nicely up into the roof of uh, Natasha's mouth. Then I pull that one in over there. I then place that here. And now the first one I'll place in position is the one lifting up and forwards on the face frame. The second one I place in position is this one from the hook forwards, and then I'll place one from the hook forwards there. Alright? So now, of course, instantly it starts pulling the uh, headgear and the face frame down. And you can see I'm going to want that a little bit further forwards because at the moment that's resting onto the face bow. It can't be touching. These, these two metal parts can't be touching here on either side because otherwise it's not pulling forward or you can't gauge how much it's pulling forward. And at the same time, or shall I say next, I need to place the elastic coming up here. And of course, if you lean over dash to the same one on the other side which comes up here. All right, so now we've got all of our bits in place. We haven't yet got the elastic on here. And as I said, we're gonna ask mum to place a button in here. And then we give mum some elastic. We've been toying with various bits of elastic. We did have some much thicker elastic than this, but we found this elastic that's got these holes in it, which seems very suited to putting a button. So now we can sew a little button, or rather we can ask mum to sew a little button there. We can place that through the batten. Tasha, put your head forward a fraction so I can get that behind. So that will then go to a button there and we've got plenty of lead. But that needs to be fairly tight because we need to pull this back. I don't want this slipping down. It needs to be really back into this position here to be effective. Otherwise, it's going to have a downward force rather than its upward force or a greater component of downward force. Head back, Tasha. So now I'm going to come back with my um, pliers here, and I'm going to just tweak this forwards. All right, that's nicely come forwards, and I will tweak the other side in the roughly the same position forwards. on that side here. 
Probably that's why it's soldered. We're going for a slightly smaller solder joint now. And right, that all is looking good. Now what I really need to do is just have a gauge to go around and see where my forces are. So I'll take a gauge here. You don't always have to do this. I did when I first started manufacturing it, so that's about 200 grams. Uh, let me grab that. That's about, as you look, that's about 200 grams. This is about 200 grams, just under. This one here, yeah, it's a bit low. So let's just tweak that up. I'll take it from about here. Actually, I'll come a bit further forward. Yep, and that's about 200 grams. So I, I, I could feel the other one when I put that on, so let me bend roughly from the same place down a little bit. Now let's turn your head that way a little bit. Thank you very much. So, and that's about 200 grams. So that's the, uh, that's everything in place. And you know, we've had some spectacular results with this appliance and it needs the wear. It's gonna have a chip placed inside here. I think it probably has a chip placed inside already. Now that chip won't always give you the perfect reading. It tends to under read just because if someone leans their head back out of the covers, then it will get reduced temperature and that gives you an under reading. Basically, this is the Muvec, the head brace, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll modify it more, but we'll keep you updated.